All right, everyone, let's talk about a way to help us um, quicken up animating. Okay, so we've done frame by frame animation where if you are animating something frame to frame, you are literally animating every frame. So for instance, I'm just gonna do a quick animation. Let's pretend I'm making a ball go across the page. So I would have frame one, and then I'm gonna just There's the next keyframe, I move it slightly. Next keyframe, I move it slightly. Next keyframe, I move it slightly. Okay. There's my basic animation, right? This is kind of what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks where we do frame by frame animation. So that's great, but it's very time consuming, okay? What I'm gonna teach you guys now is a way of speeding up the process of animate, okay? And it's called using a tween animation, okay? So we just talked about, you know, frame by frame animation. So when you watch old school Bugs Bunny or Mickey Mouse or, you know, Simpson or whatever, um, you have to animate every single frame, right? And that's what you guys did with your bouncing ball and with your walk cycles and things like that. What we're gonna be doing is doing a, a tween, okay? Now, what you have to understand is back in the day when Disney had a studio out in Burbank, California, you had a lot of animators working on a project, okay? And you had two major types of animators, what were known as key animators and in-between animators. Key animators' job was to animate the key poses. So, for instance, if I'm Mickey Mouse and my hand is going like this, you know, from here to there, the key poses would be the beginning and the end, okay? Then the in-between, uh, so key animators tend to be, you know, tended to be more senior animators, people who had done lots of projects before. In-between animators' job was to do all the in-between work. So it would do boom, 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 and then, you know, to the final pose, right? So in-betweeners job, I don't want to say like, you know, they they sort of did the less, and not to say less, I mean, it's all important, but they, they were sort of given the less, the more sort of um, menial tasks, you know, that the key animators just didn't want to do. Um, this was typically given to younger animators who had less experience and things like that. Okay. So what does this have anything to do with Adobe Animate. Well, with Adobe Animate, we can create what is called tween animations, okay? Tween for in between. And what we can do is we can be the key animators where you can set the key poses and then Adobe Animate will do all the in between work for you, okay? So let's see how this would play out. So I'm gonna to go to exercise two. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a red circle. Oops, no way there, right? All right, so there's my red circle. And then I'm gonna to go to frame 20. Let's I'm zoom in here a little bit. I'm gonna make a blank keyframe and I'm going to draw, let's draw a star. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw a star like this. Okay, so I have my first pose and then my second pose. Okay, so what I'm trying to do 
my action, you know, I have an action. The action is like, what is, what is, what am, what is supposed to happen? The action is a uh, circle will transform into a star. Okay. Now, the key poses here, you know, key pose. Oops. Key poses here are the beginning pose. The beginning pose is circle on the left side of the screen. And the end, second key pose of the end pose is star on the right side of the screen. Okay. So if this was going to be a frame by frame, like these are my key poses, right? And then I would have to do all the in between work of figuring out, like, okay, you know. I need to get from here to here. So then like, you know, you draw another circle here and it's starting to grow and it's starting to pull out the points and everything like that. And I have to do all the in-between work, right? Well, we can actually, instead of us having to do frame by frame, what I could do is if I have the key poses, the beginning and the end, I can actually have animate do all the in-between work for us. So what I'm gonna do is, you have to have the beginning and the end pose, okay? And I'm gonna click on the first pose and I'm gonna go to insert shape tween, okay? Now, this only works as long as your item is not items can not be a symbol, okay? The reason why is symbols cannot change during the course of your animation. And um, by very definition, shapes transform into other shapes. So a shape tween is a shape into another shape. Okay. So when I apply this, you can see this orange bar that appears and it has a little arrow attached to it, okay? And if I play this back, what has happened is Adobe Animate the Program has taken my key poses and it's figured out how to transition from this pose into this pose. And so you can see that for every frame, the you know the item is slowly growing. It's getting little points out of it and all that kind of stuff, right? So this is really helpful because, well, it's much faster, right? I didn't have to draw all of the in-between stuff. Also, it's going to be much faster to edit, OK? Let me explain why. Let's go back to my original like frame by frame of the circle moving across the page, right? Let's just say for the sake of argument, I don't want the circle to go from the left to the right. I want it to go from the left to the bottom. Well, let's say here I go, okay, well, if it's gonna go to the bottom, you know, this now has to go like this way, right? Well, the problem is, is when I edit this frame, it only edits that one frame. The other frames are still going in the original direction. So I would literally have to take every single drawing and like update it with its position and all that kind of stuff. And that's a real pain, okay? With in between animations, all of your animation is based on the key poses. So if you edit any of the key poses, which in this case is the beginning or the end, it's going to change the you know, the animation is going to automatically update. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to draw a new shape. Let's fill it. There we go. All right. So this is a new end pose. My pose, original pose is the same, but because I changed the end pose, the whole animation updates, okay? That's gonna be a lot 
quicker and faster to make changes. So the benefits of, you know, of using tweens are they're faster and that I can create animation faster and I can make changes or edit things a lot quicker as well. Now, you know, shape tweens are about shapes converting to other shapes. Circle turns into a star, star turns into a square. That's cool and everything, but that's really not something that you need a lot in animation. But something that we do need is something that transforms a character. And what those would be are things like position. What is a position? Well, position is where something exists on the page. So if I have a character, like this little character here, it's like, well, the character needs to move from left to right or bottom to top or bottom left to upper right. That's a position change, okay? Other things we may wanna play around with are scale, how large something is. So if something grows bigger and then it grows smaller. That's a scale change. It gets big, that's a scale change. It goes from big to small, that's also a scale change. Or we may also wanna rotate something. So rotating means like whatever direction the character is or whatever, you know, I can take the element and turn it around. Okay, so let's see how we would do that. I have this bird, okay, there's a bird drawing and we click on it, it's a shape. And what I actually wanna do is the action is going to be bird moves from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Um, the key poses are this, the key pose one or the beginning pose is bird is on left. The second key pose, or the main end poses, bird is on right side of screen. So how would we do that? Well, we're gonna add something called a motion twin as opposed to a shape twin. Now to do this, so motion twins, allow you to apply animation to position, scale, and rotation. Okay. Now to apply a motion tween, your character your character must be a symbol. Okay. So we talked to, you know, one video ago how to make symbols. So this is not a symbol yet, it's a shape. So let's take this, convert it to a symbol. So I'm gonna go to modify, convert to symbol or F8 on my keyboard. And I'm gonna convert this by just naming this, I'll call it Bluebird. Really doesn't matter what you call it. I'll just call it that though. Make sure it's set to graphic, hit okay. This is now a symbol, as you can see by looking at my properties panel here, it says instance of Bluebird. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to insert and then I'm gonna go to where it says motion twin. So what happened here is you see this little orange bar, okay? This orange bar is where you can add motion animation, okay? This bar can be made bigger or smaller, or long, I should say longer or shorter by using my um, selection tool and dragging on the edge here to go to the left or go to the right to make it longer or shorter, okay? The way I like to think of the orange bar here is it's kind of like the on-deck circle in baseball, okay? If you don't know anything about baseball, there's this thing called the on-deck circle, which is like before a batter gets into the batter's box, before they're like in the game, they can like swing a bat around. They're not in the game yet, but they're about to be in the game. That's kind of like what this is. So when you when you have this orange bar, this is where this particular symbol can be animated, okay? It can be animated anywhere between here and here, okay? It's not animated yet though, okay? So the way it works is that once you've applied a motion tween to a character, anywhere along this yellow or orange bar, if you make any changes to the character, 
in terms of its position, in terms of its rotation, in terms of its scale, it's going to automatically make a new key pose. Okay. So in this case, I want to have a key pose on the left, and I want to have a key pose at the beginning of my animation, and I want to have a key pose at the end of the animation of the bird on the right. Okay. So let's go to the beginning. You know, I'm going to take the bird, place it on the left. This is my key pose. I'm going to take my time marker, drag it to the end, drag it over here. Now, by moving this, that's going to make an automatically make a new keyframe. You might see this little thing here. It looks like a little diamond shape. Okay. That diamond is also a keyframe or a pose, key pose. Okay. So I have my first key pose here and my second key pose here. You might see this line. In my case, it's blue. Yours may be a different color. It can be any color you want. It doesn't really matter. But this indicates, this is what we call the motion line. The motion line is the line of the motion of the character. In this case, the character is moving left to right. So the line is going left to right. Each one of those little dots, by the way, if you are wondering what those little dots are, each one of those dots represents um, these little frames here, okay? Frame two through frame 19 in this case. So now when I play this back, my bird moves from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. Okay. Now remember back here when I had this, and we talked about, you know, I had this like frame by frame going from left to right, but then we decided we're going to go this way. And if I move one character, it only moves that one frame, right? Because each of these keyframes is independent and you'd have to like literally go and edit all of these independently. And that's kind of a pain, right? Just to change your animation. Well, once again, with the motion tween, everything is based on the key poses. So if you want to change your animation, rather than having to change all the in-betweens, you really just change the key poses. So right now my bird's moving from left to right, but let's just say for hypothetically, I want the bird to go from the bottom to the top. Well, what I'm going to do is take my time uh, cursor, place it over the um, the key pose. This allows me to edit the key pose. And then I'm going to take the bird and I'm going to move it down here. Okay. Then I'm going to take my time marker, place it at the end over the second key pose, take the bird and move it. And so by moving those two key poses, I've entirely, you know, I've changed the entire animation. So now my character moves from the bottom to the top, okay? <laughs> so once again, why would we want to do a motion swing? Well, it's faster and it's much easier to edit, okay? I'm going to go into exercise five, okay? So I have a car here. Now this car is actually already a symbol, okay? So you don't actually have to make it into a symbol. But what I'm going to do is apply a motion swing. Once again, it's applying a um, this orange bar on top of it. Now, in this case, instead of uh, changing the position, which is like you know where on the stage our item exists, we are going to change the scale of an item. So my action in this case is going to be car scales from small to large, okay? So what does that mean? What I mean is the first key pose is car is small. The second key pose, car is large, okay? So this is my first key pose. I'm going, to I'm going to resize it by using the free transform. I'm just going to make the car small. Remember that anywhere along here, if I take my time cursor, if I make any changes to this, whether in terms of position, scale, or rotation, it's automatically going to make a new key pose. So I don't really want this until the end. I want this on frame 20. So I'm actually going to drag this back to frame 20. 
Now what I'm going to do is change the scale of it here. And so this is going to automatically make a new keyframe. And so I have my first key pose. I have my second key pose, car small, car large. Now it's scaling my character. In this case, it's creating the optical illusion that the character is coming towards you in terms of 3D space. It's not, it's a scaling, okay? But it's giving that illusion in this particular case. All right, let's, we have this little acrobat here and I want my acrobat to flip 180 degrees, all right? So I have an action acrobat flips from zero degrees to 180 degrees, which is a half turn, okay? So what are the key poses here? Well, acrobat at zero degrees, zero degrees basically means pointing straight up in terms of math to acrobat is at 180 degrees, which is a half rotation, okay? Take this character. This character is not a symbol, so let's turn it into a symbol. Modify, convert to symbol. Acrobat, make sure it's set to graphic. Hit okay. Well, let's do, once again, we're gonna add a motion swing here. I can say how long I want this action to last for. So my character should start at zero degrees. I'm gonna rotate him up like this. Take my time marker. Remember anywhere along here that I make changes to the scale, position, or rotation, that should flip it. Let's flip it 180. You also could do this if you want to by using the transform palette. You see I'm flipping it 180. And the result's going to be that my character rotates 180 degrees. Let's say that I want my so in a you know in the last couple of animations that we've done, we've always done like you know we've only we've always animated one property. We either animated position, scale, or rotation. But actually, you can animate more than one property. So in this case, I have my acrobat, and my acrobat is rotating. But I also want the character to move from the left side to the right side. So in addition to the character rotating, I also want it to uh, change its position. So what I'm going to do is go back to the second keyframe. In addition to rotating it, let's play around with the position here. This is my motion path. And so now what's going to happen is my character rotates while also moving in position. You could also do scale too, which would have my character get smaller or larger. So I'm going to have my character start large and then end small. Okay. So now in this case, I'm animating the rotation, position, and scale of the character. All right, so I want you guys to try that out. That was exercise three, uh, three, four, five, and six, okay? So you're doing a shape tween where, you know, one object will morph or transform into another object. But we're also playing around with uh, motion tweens where we can change the position uh, the rotation and the scale of an item over time.